Hello. Hi, everybody. This is Bethany, and welcome to Bethline. Today is April 29th, 2020. In case you forgot what day it is, it's very easy to forget in this here quarantine life that we live. Um, this is my fifth episode of Bethline, and for those of you that might be new or might be tuning in for the first time, Bethline is a quarantine hotline radio show podcast sort of situation that I created. Um, it's weekly. I just get on here. I talk about life. I take questions from callers. Um, also, my cat, Snacks, has decided that he's just going to scream while walking through the living room. So he is uh, allegedly, I guess, a guest on today's episode as well because he is just pacing and screaming. So if you can hear him, sorry. Snacks, you would like to be on the show? <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, it's just this, this new fun thing that I started and I'm stoked for today's episode and it's really nice to be here and to know that we all get to hang and chat for the next hour. So, um, welcome and let's see, what was I up to the last, since the last time I talked to you? There was a crazy heat wave in LA, so it was really, really hot. Um, I ordered a hammock off of Amazon which is literally the best thing that I could have ever done for myself. If you guys have, <clears throat> excuse me, the space or the funds to buy yourself a stand-up hammock, I highly recommend it. It is just the best, like, chill vibe that I've experienced. Um, I did a lot of reading out there. I did an Instagram live, or not a live, an Instagram Q&A. Um, I've just been spending some time out in the hammock running from bees um, there's a video that's like a blooper that I posted and then took down because I was too embarrassed, but <laughs> basically a bee tried to land on me in the hammock and it was, um, <clears throat> it was quite freaky. Okay. Now my dog has joined in on the loudness. She's now chomping a bone incredibly loud right below me. So you might just be getting all sorts of animal guests on the show today. Um, all right, let's see. What else have I been up to? Uh, I ordered food. You guys, I ordered food for the first time this whole, in almost two months. I've been cooking meals for myself every single night for about the last almost two months. And finally this weekend, I broke down. I needed sushi. I was craving it so badly. So I supported a local sushi place. I supported my Postmates delivery driver and gave them a massive tip. And it felt really nice to just like have something from the outside world brought into my home. I was really anxious to do it, but once I did it, it was just sort of like, okay, this doesn't need to be that big of a deal. So if anybody is freaked about ordering food, um, it's not as scary as you think it is. So I'm just here to let you guys know that <laughs> it doesn't, and not everything in this period needs to be as scary as I think we tend to make it in our heads. So just a little bit of information that I am sharing with you. Um, okay, let's talk. TV real quickly because there was an iconic, and I mean iconic, episode of Real Housewives of New York that aired last week. Um, for those of you that listen to the show or for those of you that follow me, you know I'm obsessed with Bravo. I love reality TV. The Housewives are my shit. Real Housewives of New York this season so far is killing it. There's a new housewife. Her name is Leah, and she is bonkers. And in the last episode, Leah gets real crazy at a weekend party. She throws some tiki torches. It's just, it's nuts. Like if you guys are into reality TV, and even if you're not, it was one of the most enjoyable episodes of television I've seen in years. So highly recommend checking out the latest episode of Real Housewives of New York if you haven't yet seen it. Vanderpump Rules last night was very sweet. Stassi is finally engaged to Bo, who just seems like the sweetest guy in the world. I'm very happy for her. I, um, I definitely cried as if Stassi and Bo are my real life friends. Um, and it was just very heartwarming and sweet to see Stassi find love. Um, and then another show I'm really into that is currently in its third season is Killing Eve. I love that show so much. And I finally caught up with the new season. Love it. Villanelle is an iconic fashion. Just I stan her looks. I can't believe I just said stan. I'm like a true millennial. I no, don't think I've ever publicly used that word. I just say it like as a joke to my friends. But here I am out here learning all the lingo of the teens. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was, uh, yeah, Killing Eve is rad. If you guys have never watched it, it's available on Hulu and the AMC app. And it's a really, really good show. And Sandra Oh, 
who has the greatest curly hair of all time. And it's just a, it's a really, really good show. And I think Jodie Comer is the girl who plays Villanelle. I can't, I don't know if I'm getting her name um, correct, but anyway, love, 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 love Killing Eve. Um, aside from that, I mean, it's just been business as usual over here at my house. The, the animals are just acting a fool. Um, you know, just working on myself, doing my weekly Saturday Ryan Heffington Instagram dance class with my friends. It's very fun. I talk about that on the show a lot too. If you've never done Ryan Heffington's Instagram live dance class, it's super fun. It's just like really fun and it's very sweaty and it's a good workout. Um, all right. So I will now pivot to our, um, the section of the show that I like to call quick cues, which is basically where I answer three questions that are submitted to me by listeners over email. And if you would like to send me a question to have it answered on the show next week or weeks to come, you can email me at askbethline at gmail.com and um, you might get your question answered on, on air. So the first question comes from someone who asked to be anonymous. So I will respect that wish, of course. And their question is, hi, Bethany. I had a question on setting boundaries with an ex since quarantine began. He's been reaching out to me almost daily, checking to see how I'm doing, etc. We recently broke up a few months ago, so I've been doing my best to move on. Um, He's not handling quarantine well, so I just want to make sure he's reaching out to the right people, and if that includes me, an ex. What are your thoughts on this? So... First of all, I should, I totally skipped over this part. Sorry. I've had a lot of coffee today. <laughs> Boundaries is the topic of the show today. So that's where this boundary question comes into play. But essentially my answer to this question is, listen, you don't owe your ex-boyfriend. Um, you don't owe your ex anything. Like you really truly don't, if you don't feel like engaging with your ex is good for you, if it makes you feel anxious, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, if you feel like it keeps you stuck in bad patterns, whatever it is, like you don't have to engage. It's very easy to be polite. It's very easy to just, I think one of the coolest things that the iPhone has to offer is that function where you can just thumbs up someone's text or heart it or exclamation point it, whatever. Like that's a really easy way to set boundaries with people over text is just to sort of like acknowledge that you received the message. Um, but even if you're, even if your relationship ended on good terms, it really doesn't mean that you have to continue to keep this person in your life on a daily basis. You can totally wish them well and tell them that you hope they're doing okay and acknowledge that they've messaged you and not totally ignore them. But boundaries are for you and they also help the other person learn. So I'm telling you, like, don't feel like you have to continue talking to your ex if it's making you feel uncomfortable. Um, okay. Second question comes from Michael and Michael says, what about doing a live stream with you and Bob? So I actually have talked about this on the show before, but I'm not entirely on board with doing the live stream like performance thing quite yet. I know a lot of artists are doing it and I have a ton of respect for them. I think it's great. I think it's a really nice way to make fans feel included, to make them feel like they get to experience music during this time. But just with where I'm at, I, I'm really not quite not feeling the the doing the live performance thing yet. Also for Bob and I to do a live performance together is a bit tricky because we don't live together and anything that involves live sort of means you have to keep things in sync. And I think it would just be a little, it would be a little bit of a, of an experiment. So this thing is probably going to go on for a while. So never say never. Maybe at some point it'll happen. But currently, I really enjoy doing Bethline and I enjoy doing pre-taped performances, videos I release on my Instagram, um, things like that. So as of right now, no live performances, but never say never. Who knows? Um, Snacks is back with his screaming. <laughs> The last question comes from Bradley and Bradley's email was a bit wordy. So I'm just going to cut it down to essentially the gist of what the question was. But the question is essentially, I would like to get your opinion on how I can maintain and establish boundaries in the workplace. And then Bradley went on to basically explain that he's struggling with coworkers, with his boss, um, and just sort of the way that people act, the way that people treat him and other customers. So I just want to remind you, Bradley, and also to anybody who's listening in my also need this question answered, like you again can only, you can really only control yourself and you can really only control your reaction to things. Unfortunately, you can't control your coworkers. 
You can't control the way your coworkers act to people that might come into your place of work. You can't control your boss. None of that stuff is in your control. And I know it's really difficult because our brains, like the human brain loves to obsess and it's very easy for us to get into like hamster wheel style thinking. But if you can just acknowledge that like that's their, that's them. Like that's their side of the street. That's their shit. You're doing Bradley. You're doing your stuff. That's truly the only thing that you can do. A phrase that I really like to say a lot that really helps me is not my circus, which essentially just, you know, think of a circus. It's crazy. There's craziness going on. There's lots of clowns. There's lots of loud noises, all sorts of crazy stuff going on, right? When you see somebody else engaging in craziness and in behavior that you're like, I want no part in this, it's good to remember that it's not your circus. It's their circus. So that's something that I tell myself a lot. And believe me, I have to practice boundaries even within my work. I, I know that I haven't worked in like a retail or office sort of space in a really, really long time. So I'm sure it's difficult. Um, but that's something that I have to do in my own work and just all the time. I have to remind myself that all I can do is what's in front of me, what belongs to me. And you don't need to, um, you know, you don't need to like control other people's stuff. So, um, all right. Well, those are the quick cues. So again, remember if you are interested in having, in submitting a question, um, to have answered on air, you can email me at askbethline at gmail.com and I might answer it. All right. So today's topic is boundaries. What are they? How do we set them? The definition of boundaries is essentially this. Personal boundaries are guidelines, rules, or limits that a person creates to identify reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for other people to behave towards them and how they will respond when someone passes those limits. And this is something I found on the internet that I actually really loved. Personal boundaries where you end and I begin. So boundaries are something that like I struggle with a lot. I have a tendency to do a lot of people pleasing. I have a tendency to say yes to things that I don't actually want to do. I know I talked about this a bit last week in the social media episode. It's like I have a hard time sort of asserting boundaries for myself. It's very easy for me to tell people like let go of what your coworkers are doing. It's not your shit. It's super easy for me to tell people that, but it's difficult for me to sort of stay on my side of the street at times. So I wanted to open up this conversation for when you guys are able to call me in, call into me and ask me questions so that we can kind of engage in this topic. Um, Cause I think personal boundaries are a really important thing to have. It's really one of the most radical acts of self care that you can do. It protects you. It also teaches people. It sort of sets things up for you in terms of like, Hey, this is what I'm okay with. And this is what I'm not okay with. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And, um, I am going to now call my special guest for the episode, who I'm just going to quickly and briefly introduce. His name is Fred Savage. Um, if you didn't know this, Best Coast was the house band on a show last year called What Just Happened, which was on Fox, and it was hosted by Fred. And that is how we became friends. And he, so it's funny because Fred was my boss at one point, technically. And he's just like a really, really rad guy. He's a super, super nice guy. He's super funny. We have a really good rapport. And I just really wanted to have him on the show um, and ask him some questions about how he handles saying no to stuff and also just do a, a little bit of a check-in with him and where he's at in terms of his quarantine because that's kind of what we do on this show. We just check in. So I'm going to call Fred here in one second. All right. Adding call. Fred Savage. Here we go. Hello. Hi, Fred Savage. <laughs> Hello, Bethany. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are, are we are we live? Are We're we live. On? People are listening Holy to us cow. talk. Oh my God. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Don't you feel relieved that no one can see us though? Or do you not care? I feel I no, I feel very relieved. I feel very relieved. <laughs> I like that everyone has been um embracing zoom which is a really nice way to connect and I, yes. I really like all the zoom meetings but now everyone you know people are saying like oh i don't need to do meetings anymore because now we'll just do a zoom we don't have to have meetings uh-huh but i also think we can have phone calls they don't yes. all have to be zoom 
It's true. You know? It's so true. It's yeah. And I like sometimes like oh zooms are fun, but I don't want to comb my hair. No, or, neither. Or you know, or or Fred, worry that's, about my background. Yeah, I mean that's literally why I started a radio streaming show because I was like. Listen, I can go live every week, but I can also just be wearing like a baggy t-shirt and I can have no makeup and I can just be myself and it's chill. So listen, here on Bethline, we don't judge based on what you're wearing on the other line. It's, it's all good. It's all good. But maybe <laughs> I'm and in, 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 and this is, I've been thinking about, you know, uh, today's, today's scene, today's topic. Uh -huh. um, maybe I am just further distancing myself from people in a time where we should be, you know, maybe I'm putting up more boundaries, you know, maybe like we're always together and now it's doing, and I'm like, I just want to do phone calls. <laughs> maybe that's too much. You know, maybe I should be reaching out more than, than, than that. Maybe I shouldn't worry about having a night, a clean t-shirt or uh, any shirt at all. I mean, <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, but listen, it's like, this is kind of a perfect, I feel like the space that we're sort of in is maybe like perfect for us to learn like what our boundaries are. So maybe your boundary is that you just don't want to do everything on a Zoom call, which is perfectly okay. And maybe your other boundary is that you don't feel like wearing a t-shirt and that's also okay because our listeners need to know that if they didn't put a t-shirt on today, there's nothing wrong with that, right? No, there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. But, but that's true any day. You just do what it's you, you got to do what you need to do. It's true. You but must I, do I, what I, you must let, do. Speaking of this time, let me ask you a question. Okay. Because I have been thinking about your topic. Okay. I, I would say, like, I feel like I'm a, like, a personable person. Uh -huh. But I'm also, like, I would, a fairly guarded person. You know, yes. like, I don't really, you know, like, I'm bare, I, I feel like, and I think it was probably a, a function of, you know, uh, growing up the way I did and not really quite sure what people's motives are. Or, I don't know. I just, I just always had these kind of walls. Up. I, I would be, have lots of, like, Friends are not like good friends. You know mm -hmm. mean like not as many, you know? Yeah. Uh, lots of acquaintances, but no, it really boundaries were, were, um, kept them very close, mm -hmm. you know? And now, and, and, and in life, when you're out, when you're at work or something like I, I interact with, there's a lot of forced interaction with people that I enjoy. Yeah. When you take that away, I'm sitting here thinking, honestly, like during this time, and I'm like, maybe I should open those boundaries up a little bit because. Again, I have a lot of, uh, you know, great acquaintances, you know, good friends, but no, no one was very, um, I don't know, like when you take out, when you take away all the forced interaction of daily life, yeah. I'm like, boy, what are I doing last with? Maybe I should <laughs> open those up a little bit and be a little bit more free. But then you call, then you call, and I'm like, oh, she has a friend. <laughs> you have a friend. We're friends. No, no I mean. But, but, but do you feel like this is laid bare for some people? Uh, because they've had so much time to yeah. themselves, um, you think it's, it, it finds people making adjustments to their boundaries? I mean, probably. I think, well, here's one thing that I'll, because I was going to ask you this, and this is kind of like answering your question while also asking you this. Like, something that I've been coming into, like, a bit of, like, a an issue with during this time is, like, there are so many people that are, like, I just keep getting asked to like do things. And then there's like people who I don't know very well who are like within my circle, but aren't like super close that are like trying to FaceTime me all the time and like be, and, and I'm just kind of like, ah, like I don't really know. Like, so then I end up answering or I end up doing the thing. And then I'm like annoyed because I'm like, I didn't really want to do this. So it's like, I struggle. Oh, but just to kind of get them off. Do you, think, do you think people are taking advantage of the fact that they know uh, for all intents and purposes that you're kind of, a captive audience? I don't really know. I just feel like it's like, it just seems like to, to your question, it almost feels like people are just like, they're bored. So they're like, okay, let's just reach out. Let's just like call all the people in the phone book. And then I tend to be the person that I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I should answer this because I have a hard time. I struggle with boundaries. Like I have a hard time being like, uh, I don't really need to do this thing. And then I end up doing it and then I like hang up the, the interaction or I like say yes to the oppor the work opportunity and I do it. And then I'm suddenly feeling like, oh, like I don't, I didn't, like I wish I wouldn't have done that. But it's like I struggle with just saying no or not answering the phone. Do you ever, like you've, I mean, you've obviously been working in this industry for years and years. I'm sure you've had to say no to things. Do you struggle with saying no or is it easy for you to say no? 
Um, I, um, it's hard. It's very hard to say no. Uh And I also feel, I also really admire other people's tenacity. So even if it's something I don't want to do and they keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming. (laughs) Finally, it's like, fine. Yeah. A, leave me alone. B, I want what you have. Right. It's like the people that just can't. And that's something that's interesting to me about boundary setting is like, the people that don't know how to respect boundaries that just keep crossing your boundary and are just like still always there, like showing up, doing the thing. It's like, I oftentimes feel disrespected because I'm like, listen, I've really tried here. But then at the same time, I'm like, wow, you really have dedication to just continuing to try to make this thing happen. So it's like, yeah. So where do you draw (laughs) the line between like people who don't respect boundaries and, um, you know, like, the squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of thing. You know I mean, what in in a professional form. Yeah. And then like in interpersonal things, like if maybe a first interaction isn't great or even a second interaction isn't great, maybe the person wants to pers- continue pursuing something. Totally. A friendship or, or, you know, and, and, you know, down the road you could say, Oh God, I'm so glad they kept on it because yeah. we have this great relationship now. So at what point does it become disrespectful? I guess, you think? I mean, I guess it would really be like if you, how it makes you feel. Cause that's really like what boundaries are is there, there's something that you set as your own sort of like, it's a limitation for yourself. Right. It's like, so I think if somebody keeps like, this makes me want to segue into, since you said first interaction, I kind of want to quickly like tell the, the listeners about the first time you and I met, because you had an opportunity to set a boundary with me real fast, but you kept on wanting to be my friend. Can we please tell people what happened the first time you and I met? <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, go for it. You go, go. go. <laughs> okay. So for those of you that are listening, the, the way, and I explained this before I called you, but Fred and I became friends because Best Coast was the house band on Fred's Fox show called What Just Happened. And when we got the request to come in and meet you, I literally walked into the room, went to shake your hand and was like, hi, it's so nice to see you again. And you kind of looked at me like, again, like we've never met. And then I essentially, you guys, I had met Fred's brother, Ben Savage, like out years ago at a show. And I essentially, like, I knew Fred wasn't Ben. But when I met Fred, I was just like, we met at that show, my dad's show, remember? And then suddenly it dawned in my brain that I was like, this is Fred Savage, not Ben Savage. And then I had to admit what happened. And it, like, you had the opportunity to basically be like, no, this girl sucks. She thought I was somebody else. But instead, you kept you kept the boundary open for me. You let me be on your show. You became my friend. Like, so you guys, it's like sometimes you can really fuck up and mistake someone for their sibling, and then they'll still be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, I it's, that's so interesting. I I didn't see that as a Boundary, no, uh, I'm jo- I'm fully I'm joking. I'm like totally joking. Oh, okay. It's, it, I'm just no, like I, it's you, me trying to be a comedian. You know I like to try and be funny. You are funny. Thank you. I love that you think um, I'm funny. It makes it gives me confidence in my comedy. <laughs> um I think you should you should have come. That's all you need to do is be funny, be confident in it. Commit. <laughs> commit. <sighs> um so I love I love that interaction because um uh, I, I just, I, I don't know. It just, you, 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 it was so, it was so vulnerable. You were so vulnerable <laughs> and that you like owned it and, but not before you owned it, but not before like doubling and tripling down. Yeah. And it was only, like, I love that. I like that we both kind of pushed back at one another yeah. and it was, I don't know. It was good. It was a good, I was like, I like this. I like her. Yeah. Awesome. It gave us, it gave us like a good, I will say like it, it set our friendship up for like a fun sort of like, we have a good rapport. We just like, I feel like we now sort of just have this thing where we're both pretty neurotic. It's very clear. Like I would see you, mm-hmm. we would see each other on set of the show and we would both kind of be like, being neurotic and acting our crazy ways. And it sort of, it was like, I embarrassed the shit out of myself by confusing you for your brother. And then it was like, our friendship was, was born. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like good, uh, like, fr- like friendships. I really think one of the defining characteristics are, um, of a good friendship is being comfortable to look silly, you know, yeah, that's true. uh, or, 
or, or, or, or foolish or whatever it is. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I felt, I felt silly that moment and you felt silly that moment. And that was the first moment. And I was like, well, if we can get past this, I mean, she's it's never going to get rid of that. It's true. It was truly, you guys, it was like, also, I don't think I ever told you this part, but Bob and I, after we left that meeting, he and I like went, this is, you'll love this. Cause I know you love Bob and I and how weird we are, but like we fully left like that you're meeting. Never gonna see him again. <laughs> no, we left the meeting and we, we drove straight to like whatever mall was like in the Valley. And we went to the cheesecake factory to have lunch and we sat across from each other. And I was like, there's no way we're going to get hired. Like, there's just no way we're going to get that show. Like I fucked it up for us. And Bob was basically like, yeah, that was, you know, we, we were convinced. Like I was truly like, I ruined our chances at Fox television and being friends with Fred Savage. I ruined it. And then, you know, like a couple of weeks later, you called us and you're like, you guys are hired. You're great. And I was like, wow. So for the listeners, it, it does. It's like what Fred said. It's like, it pays to just be yourself. And I think that that, that could like tie back into the topic of boundaries, right? It's like, if your boundary states that you really need X, Y, Z, like that's you being authentic to yourself and just owning who you are. So if your person, if one of your personality traits is that you embarrassingly confuse a savage brother for another savage brother, and then it becomes a running joke in the television show that you're on, listen, live your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you a question? Something you mentioned a second ago? Yeah. Because I'm interested in this. Okay. Um, during this time, uh -huh. um, there's been a lot of like reaching out. Yes. And I felt like Jenny and I tried to like reach out to someone who, you know, we're thinking about or who we might not reach out to at, at, at um, any other given day just because you're busy and uh -huh. the, just whatever, the, the, the noise of life or whatever's going around. Um, and we're trying to be conscious and reach out to people and just say, hey, like thinking of you, you yeah. okay? And we know everyone's pretty much okay, but it's more just a way of being like, I care about you, you're important to me. Yes. You know, that reach out. Yes. Which I think is important, that connection. Mm -hmm. But do you feel, it sounds, when you were saying a reach out, like, is, is that, can that be a boundary cross? Can that be, like, if people are like, yeah, we, we're not, like, like I, I called someone that I work with uh -huh. pretty regularly. And I texted, I texted her, and I was like, hey, you know, is anything, you know, you doing okay? And then it was like, there was like a weird text I called her. I said, hey, like, is, is everything all right? Just checking in. Hope you're okay. And she was very cordial, uh -huh. I would say, at best. Uh -huh. but was, I think she was weirded out that I called. So, I mean, I, give me your thoughts on that. Like, of the impulse to reach out versus, versus, like, could just the initial reach out be a boundary cross? Or are you saying the boundary cross is when they call again and again and again or FaceTime you at all hours? See, my boundary cross is when it's, like, FaceTime at all hours, calling, 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 like, not just accepting. Like, because, listen, it's, like, I don't ever like, I'm not like an ignore person. I used to be like, I used to just straight up be like someone would text. I'd be like, eh, I'm not good. I, you know, just like, no, thank you. But now I like, at least will like engage or send a thumbs up or something like that. But it's like, to me, I think it is important to stay in touch with people that you care about and to check on people. Like, I don't think the initial reach out is a boundary cross. I think it becomes a boundary cross when say somebody like tells you like, oh, I can't talk right now or whatever. And then you just consistently keep reaching out and nagging, I think then it becomes a thing where it's kind of like, okay, read the room, right? Like, I, I, and I think you would, listen, you and I are so similar. So you're saying I should like, have, I, so you're saying I, I, I made a mistake driving over to her house, <laughs> camping out yes. the front and saying, hey, that was, a <laughs> that yeah. was, okay, that good, was good. when you, that was when you crossed the boundary, but it's like, you and I are similar where it's like, I feel like if I, cause I, you and I, like you and I have a very similar personality where it's like, when I reach out to somebody you know, I'm very like, especially when it's someone I'm close to, I'm like, hi, how are you? Like, it's, it's a lot of energy. And when somebody gives me the like, I'm good. Thank you for thinking of me. I'm like, are they mad at me? Like, did I do something? <laughs> it's like, I struggle with that. So personally, I don't think it sounds like you did anything to boundary cross. And I do think it's important to like, check on people during this time and to let people know you're thinking of them. And I think also another thing that's really important to, to remember about boundaries is that it's very easy to take things personally when somebody seem seemingly has a boundary set because you suddenly are like, well, they don't like me, but I don't even think it's that. I think it's just like, that's what that person has set up for themselves. And it really has nothing to do with you. I think boundaries are really, yeah. That's everyone's going through something totally. especially now. Like people are going through things that have nothing to do with you. 
totally and, and that's like I, it, I mean fred i'm with you it's like my every every interaction i'm like they used a different punctuation mark like they must hate me and then it's like i have to tell myself like get over yourself it's not about you like this is truly not about there's you. a lot there are a lot of inputs going in to yeah. get this reaction it's 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 a lot but but you know listen i i don't think you've crossed any boundaries I think you're doing well. Great. That's good because <laughs> you're saying all this to someone who did FaceTime you out of the blue <laughs> and like late at night. No, but when so, you FaceTimed me and and that was like, I'll tell you the truth. Like when I, I told you this when you FaceTime, like when we were talking, I told you I I like saw that it was I like heard the FaceTime thing and I was like, oh god. And then I looked and it was like Fred Savage. I was like, of course I'm answering this. It's like I I struggle with there are times where someone will call where I'm like, I should probably answer that. And then I do. And then I'm kind of like, but you're like my friend, like you're someone who I'm like, yeah, when you FaceTime, I'm like, it's great. I'd love to FaceTime with you. And you, I have to make an admission to you while we're here with people listening to our conversation. The movie you told me to watch that night on FaceTime, I never finished it. (laughs) You know, I will say I was, I wanted a review and I think I just got it. I think I just got it. No, but here's the thing. I, I was enjoying it. I just fell asleep. And then the next day I was like, I should finish that movie. And then I was just like, eh. And then I just like moved on to watch some like trash reality TV or something. But listen, like what better place to just tell you the truth than this space where people can hear our conversation, right? I couldn't, I didn't just like text it to you. I was just like, I'm going to wait until I have Fred on my radio show. And then I'm going to break the news to him that I didn't finish the movie he told me to watch. <laughs> Uh, I, I, mean, I think I think that's the review. I think that's really the review. No, <laughs> fell asleep. I fell asleep. Yeah, it's okay. But this was also Fred you know, so early into quarantine. Like I had just gotten home from tour. I was like, you know, I was feeling real weird. I was like sad that my tour was over. So I was just very like sleepy. You know what? Maybe I'll fuck it. I'll go back. I'll go back. I'll finish it. I'll give you the full review. We were just different people back then. We were. I mean, I mean, we were so we, different. Like, early quarantine days it's just like we're not the I same can't... people <laughs> no now do you think that's when you say that is that with regret or is that like oh, okay we're like we've learned to adapt we're like we're growing no it... I, I have no regret I feel like I feel genuinely like I'm like I feel grateful that I'm like got that I've gotten some some sort of like normalcy out of this thing because it's so not normal it's like in the beginning I felt so crazy and it was so like what the fuck like how am I going to do this and what's going on and and now it's just kind of like all right it is what it is for a little bit and doing this show is actually really cool because people you know there's a portion at the end where people are able to call in and I get to talk to them and and a lot of people ask really cool questions like they just talk about their experience with this and it's actually really cool to be able to connect with people and like tell them like you're not alone in feeling that way. This thing is not normal. Cause I do think our brains sometimes convince us that we're the only people that feel the way that we feel. So it's, you know, I'm just like, I'm just like riding, riding the, the, the wave, I guess is what I'm doing. <laughs> do you find in talking to people that people are cabin fever, going crazy, out of their mind, desperate for connection? Or do you feel like people are like, I kind of am appreciating the, you know the the le- you know less noise uh, focusing on what's important mm-hmm. uh, getting to do things I haven't done in a long time like like there is a calmness to what's going on yeah that you know look I'm we're very fortunate we're together we're healthy mm-hmm. um, you know uh, you know I'm not working but that's not it's not I haven't been working so long that we're worried about the the the, the, the the weekly, daily, monthly yeah. expenses. So, yeah. I mean, I can say this from a, I know this is from a place of, um, you know, privilege to some mm-hmm. extent, but uh, I mean, there's something I'm enjoying uh, at the change of pace and yeah. the, um, just, just, the, just, just the muting of a lot of noise. Yeah, it's for sure. It's been nice. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a, there's a different, everybody's different. You know, it's like some people call and they say like, I'm loving this. I've like learned a new, a new hobby. I'm, You know, there's a lot of people that call in and ask me questions that are specific to like exercise or mental health, like self-care kind of stuff. And then there are people that are like, I really feel crazy and I I don't know what to do. But at the end of the day, it's like 
something that I keep trying to remind people that are listening. And also it's helpful for me to remind myself is like, you just kind of have to accept where you're at on any given day. Right. It's like every day of this is such a one day at a time situation. And it's like, if tomorrow you wake up and you feel horrible, like you just kind of have to accept that, like, that's what tomorrow looks like. That's what that day looks like. And obviously there are things that you can do to get out of your head and to sort of like take care of yourself. But it's like, I think there's a lot of this idea of like, you need to be doing this quarantine right, or you need to be very productive or you need to be doing, you know, and it's like, that's not, that's not the case. And that's like why I wanted to even start the show in the first place was to like, let people know that like, you know, it's not, it's not like a creative retreat. Like, Cause everybody's like, well, you're a musician. You should be performing live and doing more stuff. And it's like, but that's not what I really wanted to be doing right now. Right now I would rather be like talking to my friends on this show and having fans call in and talking to them and just doing what it is that I'm doing. So that's really why I started this was to really like allow people to understand that it's like on any given day, like it's totally fine. Whatever you're capable of that day, that's fine. So yeah. I like what you were saying about how, you know, what you're doing is like whatever, you, whatever's right for you is right. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think there's, there is a lot of like measuring and well, like they're winning quarantine, you know, yes. whether it's parents who are killing it, you know, we're seeing all these parents it's like, Oh, I've created this play for, or, or people who are learning to play instruments. And totally. Play novels. It's like someone, I saw a tweet that was like, if you come out of this, and you haven't learned a new skill or found a new workout routine or, you know, all these things, then you didn't have a lack of time. You had a lack of discipline. And I was like, oh, eat, eat, eat it. Yes. Eat it. That is so. Yeah, eat it. That person needs, that person needs a boundary. That person needs to learn boundaries because that's bullshit. Like if you, if you, you know, if you like, seriously, and I think that that's also really unhealthy to be spreading around because it's like people's like the human brain loves to do like compare and despair. Like we love to see what other people are doing and be like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not good enough because I'm not doing what they're doing. In reality, it's like, you don't need to be doing anything other than like what you're doing and what you feel capable of doing. And if that is literally like putting on a t-shirt for your zoom meeting or not putting on a t-shirt for your zoom meeting, that's fine. Like that's, that's, that's all you can get done in a day. Then you're good. You know? So anyway, I think, there's really no right way to do this. The only right thing to do is to like stay home. Right. And like be conscious of how safe you're being. That's really the only rule that you need to follow. As far as the productivity stuff goes, it's like do whatever makes you feel good. Yeah. Do what makes you feel good. If it's, if it's a crossword puzzle, if that's your day or a jigsaw puzzle or or you read a book or sometimes I just order books and it makes me feel good. You know, I have a small business. Sounds that's, great. That's sometimes, good. That is good to help. Yeah, that is very. That's, that's it. Good. That's but good. like, uh, there is a um, because this is kind of going on, and uh, you know, right now there's no specific end in sight. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it's not too far out there. Yeah. But um, there's kind of this like, well, tomorrow will be. I'll do that. You know, tomorrow will be a better day. Or yeah. if I don't feel good about myself, like today, or what I did or what I produced or didn't produce, or I can just, I, I'm like very calm and thinking like, well, tomorrow's coming. Like, we're, yeah. I'm going to still be in this house. Like yeah. the demand, it's like the demands right now on, uh, on me are just the ones I'm putting on myself right now. Exactly. You know, exactly. exactly. And so, yeah, there's just gotta be a little more kind of self, uh, be boundaries, kind yourself. boundaries with yourself. Right. Cause you can even have those with yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the yes. lesson here is, yeah, no, yeah. it really is. It's, it's really truly like a, a, just a matter of learning to be like kind with yourself and gentle with yourself and just allowing yourself to like, whatever it is that you feel capable of doing, like do that. And then you're right. Like there is, there's literally tomorrow. I mean, we named our album always tomorrow, like before this whole thing happened. And I feel like every single day I'm like, ah, there's always tomorrow, best coast. That's, that's so true. That's so true. <laughs> it's very it true. It's so true. That's so just true. Be a little, yeah, be, yeah, just know that like, you, can, you, can, you can do it tomorrow. You really can. <laughs> I mean, you and really also can. now, I'm staying home and all the things we're giving up, interaction, work, you know, just yeah. sanity, you know, yeah. all these things, that's enough. That's what it's we're being asked to do. It's true. So it's like, literally, yeah, home, yeah. That's, you're, you know, if, if you're struggling with, um, oh, am I doing it? Like, that's enough. 
mm-hmm. just staying home for if that you know like for a day like that's enough for a day. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's so so true. Well, Fred, thank you so much for being here and for talking to me and for helping me realize lots of different things about boundaries and always tomorrow and not confusing friends for their siblings. You are the best. And thank you. You are the best. <laughs> I'm so happy you're doing this. And, um, Thanks. I, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. And I'll watch, I swear to you, by the end of this thing, I'll finish that movie and I'll give you a real review. I promise. Give me a review. Okay. Give me a review. Although I will say, I will say, I feel like I got one. I feel like this is no. it, but okay. Okay. Well, we'll, okay. we'll see. But more will be revealed. More will be revealed. There's always tomorrow. I'll more will be revealed. Soon. Okay. I thought you did. Bye, Bye. Fred. Uh, Fred is the best. All right. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. So I'm now going to open up the line for about 10 minutes and take calls from listeners. Um, please remember that if you do, if your call is answered, just to mute the device that you're listening on so that there is no feedback. And the topic today is boundaries, self-care, kind of whatever. If you guys have any questions that sort of go in line with boundaries in any which way, let's chat. All right. Opening the line. The fan line is now open. You can call me at 205-736-3201. All righty. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi. Who's this? This is Sue in California. Hi, Sue in California. How's it going? Well, it's going really well. And um, I just wanted to discuss boundaries. Okay. What's up? Well, um, I've been told by my son that you know, boundaries, mom. And I think being (laughs) a former alcoholic and being the youngest and being a Taurus and being a gregarious person, Uh I have a hard, have a hard time saying no Uh and have a, have a very hard time being quiet. And I think you can probably (laughs) relate to the fact that when you're the entertainer Mm -hmm. and and when you're the, the person who wants everyone to be happy, you do cross boundaries because you're just you don't want to be perceived as being mean mm-hmm. and you don't want to tell people, no, I'm not going to go to your party. Cause I don't feel like it. Cause that would be mean. Mm-hmm. But I guess my question would be, how do you live in your truth and say no to people without feeling as a people pleaser that you're disappointing people? Well, that's like such a, that's such a like topical question to me currently, because that's sort of where I'm at with in terms of like learning to set boundaries is like, I'm learning that the way that I feel when I set a boundary, you know, because a lot of times I'll say no to something and then I'll feel like, oh, God, that person probably hates me now or probably thinks I'm an asshole. And it like there's a whole sort of thought process that goes along with it. But sort of something that I'm learning through my through the therapy that I do is really just like I'm not I really just I can't control what anybody else thinks of me. And the reason that I right. set the reason that I set these boundaries in the first place is to take care of myself. And also, I think when you set a boundary, you know, you're, you're setting it for yourself, but you're also setting it for the other person because it really teaches them. You know, if you, if you yeah. like cut someone off in a loving kind of way or whatever, like it sort of redirects them and their issue and it sort of like teaches them and forces them to sort of go on their own journey with it. So, I mean, that's why I wanted to talk about this topic, right? Because it's like, we all struggle with it. I don't think like boundaries aren't just this inane thing that we're born with and we just know how to do it. I think it's like, it's a constant struggle. It's a journey. And I think it's really just learning like Fred and I were saying, it's learning to just be easy on yourself and to just be kind to yourself and accept where you're at on your journey. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. It's like, I feel, I feel guilty sometimes, but I'm trying to take that guilt and like remind myself like, you're not in control of how the other person feels. So the four, the four agreements, did you read the four agreements? No. What's that? Where it's, it's a wonderful book and just the four agreements. Okay. You can Google it. It's don't take things personally. Well, and my so son true. would say, Hey mom, you need to grow a pair. <laughs> you need to grow a pair. And I was trying to explain this to a female friend and she was from another country and she goes, why are you talking about fruit? Because she thought I was talking about like apples oh. and pears and stuff. I go, no, no, like balls. 
But I think as a woman and as a mother and just as an empath and as a person who has a hard time saying no to people, uh, boundaries are definitely difficult. And then I'm just going to quickly say I'm doing a video um, tomorrow on my birthday for Best Coast. And it's, I mean, for a, a karaoke thing, and it's going to be oh. the only place. It's oh, be the only that's place so because cool. In, and didn't you say... You weren't you asked a question if you could live anywhere, where would you live? And you said Los Angeles. Yeah, I, I don't really. And that's, I feel the same. Yeah. I feel the same. Well, it's happy birthday. I love, Thank I you. love a Taurus. I have so many of my closest friends are Taurus, and you guys are great. And I wish you the best. And I will definitely Thank check you. out that and book. And these are my monkeys. That's the thing. It's like, this is my circus. These are my monkeys. It's my true. My children are my monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. everything you of do. Of course. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. Oh, happy birthday, Sue. Okay, next caller. Hi. Hello. Oh, happy birthday, Sue. Okay, next caller. Hi, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, great. What's your name? Uh, Zach. Hi, Zach. What's your question? Um, I was calling actually about Bob. Um, I know he recorded on the new Fiona Apple album. Mm -hmm. uh, did he have any, I guess, insight into that, given how, I guess, standoffish she is? I know he's a super fan, but it just, it, I guess it interests me that they both recorded together. Having met Bob, I know he's kind of the same. Um, I, <laughs> no, he, you know, Bob and Fiona have known each other for a really long time, and I think that um, he just really, you know, he was just really honored to get asked to be on the record. And yeah, oh, I, don't, really? I don't have too much other information aside from that. But, but yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Have okay. a good night. Okay. Bye. Okay. All right. I have time for one more call. And I see there's somebody waiting. So I will go ahead and answer. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, who's this? This is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. How are you? I'm doing fantastic now. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Um, so my main issue right now is about having to set new emotional boundaries that I've so <laughs> the short version is my ex and I just recently got back together uh -huh. and um, he said, you know, he wants to take things very slow and I'm, uh, <laughs> you've got another Taurus on the line. Uh -huh. I, I, I move, I move very fast emotionally. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, he and I were at the point where, I mean, we were literally talking marriage right before we broke up. Uh -huh. And so having to go from that to six months later now um, kind of starting over and having to set these new emotional boundaries that, uh -huh. um, that I've never had to have with him before, or at least not in a very long time. Um, I'm just curious if you have had experience having to set up new boundaries like that with some that you have a lot of history with. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's like, I think boundaries are something that like we always, we have to constantly be setting, right? Because we have to constantly like things, life is ever changing. It is always evolving. Like circumstances are different. Different people are different. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, you know, like I think it is something that, and also as we change and as we grow, our boundaries change. Things that we need, things that we don't need, that all that stuff is always moving. So, you know, my, right. advice, my advice to you would just be like, that is obviously, I'm going to really quickly, my dog's about to go nuts because she sees a dog. So I'm just going <laughs> to really quickly like move her away from the window. So there's not <laughs> insanity. Okay. <laughs> That's like the problem with doing <laughs> this, this live show is I'm like, oh my God, I have to like babysit my dog yeah, in the no. process. Anyway. Um, I'm working, I'm working <laughs> from home and I have two cats that love my attention constantly. So I get it. <laughs> like I have to set boundaries with even my dog. But anyway, what I was going to say is it's right. like, you know, I think it's like, you have to try and shift your perception because that's really where it lies yeah. is like you are used to something existing a certain way and you're used to something being the way that it was in the past. But the reality is like the past is exactly that it's the past and you're currently living in the present and you're currently like, I'm sure you've changed. I'm sure your ex has changed. I'm sure a lot of circumstances yeah. are different. 
So you kind of have to try and evaluate it in this way where you're like, okay, this is the now. And also like there's really, and I know that it's difficult because you have history with this person and you did it a certain way right. in the past, but like there's really nothing wrong with taking things really slow. There's, it's actually like really, really good, especially given sort of the time, the, like the way the world is operating currently. There's so much space. Yeah. There's so much space and so much room to like work on yourself, figure out things that you genuinely love, things that like you really want to like focus on about yourself and just kind of like let the other person do their thing and to focus on you. So I see it as, and I'm sure it doesn't feel this way, but just hearing, just hearing the story, like from my perspective, I see it as an opportunity to like, to grow. And I see it as an opportunity to like, mm -hmm to get to do things differently and for that to be actually like a really positive experience because it's like we don't ever want to repeat our past and we don't want to continue to like do things yeah. ways that they didn't work you know it's like the definition of insanity and, is literally doing yeah, something and, the same way over and over again and expecting different results right so yeah and especially because like when when he and I were together we moved in together in like I want to say maybe six months. Like I was mm -hmm. practically living there within four months. So we moved extremely fast. Yeah. And so there, there were, I mean, even from day one, there were almost no emotional boundaries. Cause mm -hmm. like I'm 30, he's 31. And I'm like, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. Um, you know, let's figure all this shit out right now. Yeah. And you know, so that way we know whether we want to get into this or not. And I think, I think that's part of the reason that it moves so fast in the first place. So to like already know all these things about each other, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like you said, kind of having to, to start fresh. It's like, I already very deeply know this person, yeah. but I do appreciate that it is an opportunity for us to get to know each other in a different way than we did before. Totally. And also to get to know yourself in a different way. Right. Because it's like everything yeah. is different now than it was then. So I would just say like, when you start to feel kind of like frustrated because you're like, this isn't moving as fast as I would want it to, or it doesn't look the way it used to, like it's not supposed to. The past and the present are two completely separate things. So you really have to just right. remember like why it is that you, you know, like why it is that you're having to sort of like start over. I don't know exactly what happened with you, but it's like, it's, it's probably like, it's probably really healthy for you to just like continue to move forward on your own thing for him to continue to move forward and for you guys to just slowly sort of like let things fall back into place. So I hope that helps. I yeah. think it's really helpful to just remember like past and present to completely different things. And there's a full blown right. reason for that, you know? So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. For yeah, that. Really of course. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Good luck with that. And happy birthday. If it hasn't happened yet. It's going to be on May 11th. So thank uh, you. Oh, the day after Bob's. <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome all right thank you so much for calling have a nice day thank you you too right. bye bye okay it is now 4 53 so i'm going to close the line fan line is now closed all right well thank you guys so much for joining me on another episode of beth line that was really fun um thank you so much to fred savage for being my guest, thanks to everyone who called in and everyone that tuned in. Um, you know, I said this at the top of the show and I know I said it last week as well, but I really do, you know, I love doing this show. I have a lot of anxiety building, like leading up to the episode. Like I'll sort of be in the house on Wednesdays and be like, oh God, like, it's just, is it going to go wrong? Like what am I, it's just like, you know, I'm just like you guys. I have a lot of anxiety. I have a lot of worry. I like, want to control things so specifically. And the second I start doing this thing, it just becomes so much fun. I forget about all that anxiety, all that worry, all that shit that I deal with on the lead up. So it's just really, really, really fun for me to do this. And I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate all the new listeners, all the returning listeners. If I didn't get to your questions or calls this week, hopefully we can chat next week. I'll be back same time, different guests, different topic. And until then, um, take care of yourselves and don't be afraid to say no. I say that to you and also to myself. And email me at askbethline at gmail.com if you have any questions for next week. All right, guys, take care. I'll talk to you later.